But they thought that just because they had an encounter somewhere along the way, they were okay. They thought that just because the Lord met them at some point and gave them an, a, a touch and, and gave them a promise, that that was it. But there's more to the story. There's more to this walk than just getting a touch. There's more to this walk than just feeling good every once in a while. But the Lord is looking for us to walk with him, to get to that place and to dwell in the house of God. Now, as you see, in this point that Jacob uh, was told by the angels that his name would be called Israel. For as a prince has he power with God and men has prevailed. Jacob's power came when he recognized and confessed who he was. But Jacob still hadn't made it back to the father's house yet. But when Jacob rose up from the place where he was, he continued to walk. He continued to walk and he came face to face with Esau, the same brother that was trying to kill him, the, the same brother that was trying to destroy him. He came face to face with his situation. Church, our situation is meant to give us a revelation. Our situation is meant to move us forward. But so often we pray to be removed from the situation rather to, than to face it head on. Rather than to face the difficulty. Rather than to face the trauma. Rather than to face that which we need to endure and go through in order to make it. Jacob had to come, even though he had confessed who he was, he still had to come face to face with his situation. But when he faced the situation, the Lord had gone before him. The Lord had gone before him and made a way out of his situation. And so as Jacob continued to journey on in, this, in chapter 33, it tells us he came to the place where his father were. He came to the place where and took up residence in the land that uh, his, uh, had been promised to Abraham. But as he took up residence, as he set up camp there, as he went and, and established his dwelling place there, the Lord said, no, get up. For there's somewhere else that you need to go. The Lord told Jacob, Jacob in chapter 35, he said, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Jacob was sent back to the place where he had an encounter with God. The place where he named the house of God. It was a place where he was sent back to. For church, when we depart and we choose to walk down our own path, we've got to get back to the place where we left God. When we make up in our minds to go our own route and to go our own way and to live life as we choose, we've got to take that same road back to get back to the place where God has encountered us, where he's met us. Once we depart or we, we leave or we fail and we fall on our faces and we walk away, we have to come back down that same path to get to the place where God has spoken to us, where God has dealt with us. We have to come back to the same place. But too many people don't get back to the same place where they left God. Why? Because we can't deal with self. We can't get past the roadblock of acknowledging who we are and acknowledging the fact that we've messed up and that we need to get back. For as we talked about in the Sunday school lesson, oftentimes when we fail, we sit at the feet of our failure. We sit in the place of failure. Why? Because we think, you know what? It, it makes no use to try and go on. This is as good as I'll be, so I might as well just set up camp here. But Jacob had to come back to the place where God had met him. Why? Because there was a work for Jacob to do. There was still a promise on his life. There was still something that there was for him to do. But Jacob had to put himself aside to be able to get back to the place 
where he had walked away from God in the first place. For when we fail and when we fall, it's because we're led away by our own lust. We're led away by our own desires. We're led away by what we want to do as opposed to what God has for us. When we're led away and we fall into sin or we fall away or we're disobedient to the Lord, it's because we're led away by, by what this man wants. Because we, we place more importance on what this flesh wants as opposed to that what God wants. But as was said this morning, just because we fall, just because we fell flat on our face, doesn't mean that that's the end of the story. It doesn't mean that that's the end of the road for us. It doesn't mean that that is our final resting place, but what it means is that we've got to acknowledge who we are and put ourselves aside so we can take that painstaking road back to the place where we left God. But as you know, when you're walking down that road, it's a difficult road to get to. And it's a hard road because as we saw the parallel, that road is, is covered with overbursts. There's things that we have to push out the way. There's God, us that we have to come face to face with. We have to come face to face with the reality that we messed up. We have to come face to face with the reality that, you know what? We didn't get it right. We're not maybe what we thought we ought to be. Maybe, you know, we've been church for so long. I know myself sometimes, uh, you know, we, uh, I, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. Because when I make a mistake, I think, you know what? My God, I've been in church my whole life. How could I have done that? How could I have been so dumb to do that? And instead of acknowledging who I am and moving forward, I sit at the place of my failure. I sit at that place of stumbling. I sit at the roadblock and I, I wallow in self-pity saying, well, you know what? You know what? Maybe, 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 I, maybe the promise wasn't real. Maybe, maybe the Lord really hasn't called me. Maybe this is as good as I'll get. But Lord Church, I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You can't allow yourself to get caught up. We can't allow ourselves to get caught up. I don't know if the message is clear. Lord, I pray that you deliver it as you desire. But Lord, you're the one who gave the word. Church, we cannot get caught up in ourselves. Because if we get caught up in ourselves, we'll end up dying in the place that we are. And instead of an opportunity to push past and to learn, all we'll be doing is digging our own grave. But church, it starts with getting past us. It starts with acknowledging who we are and, and the fact that we messed up. And it seems so simple to do. It's simple to stand and say that we've got to confess who we are. But in reality, it's one of the most difficult things to do. Why? Because we have to come face to face with who we are. But see, these are the things we don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about uh, the fact that I failed. I don't want to talk about the fact that I heard was standing in the kitchen one day and the Lord gave me an invitation to come up high and I said, Lord, I can't do it. We don't want to talk about the fact that you know, we uh, are, are engaged in, in, in behaviors that we should not be engaged in. We don't want to talk about the fact that we have been traumatized and we uh, I feel like we can't love our brothers and sisters because of what someone has done to us. We feel as if we can't talk about these things, but church, we must talk about them. We must get them out for a little, until we recognize and we talk about them, then we stay captive to them. So how do we get past ourselves? How do we acknowledge what has happened or what has been done or what we've done so that we can continue on and to get healing? Well, first we start by, by vocalizing it, by saying it. You know, it's, it's tough sometimes whenever you have to put words to something, you have to say it out loud. It's as if it takes on a life of its own. And I had given someone a, a directives the other day. The Lord had impressed me on, uh, on my heart to give someone directives about writing down who they are. And to start writing and, and talking about who they are and what they do on a regular basis. And the Lord kind of pressed me like, yeah, you know, you're giving other people this advice. Maybe you should take it for yourself. And I started this exercise. And my God, some of the things that came out. There's some things I didn't even want to commit to paper because just putting it on paper made it look so real. It made it so true. I'm like, my God, that was me. My God, I was capable of doing that? 
He, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, uh, and looking back over, over what I read, I realized, my God, what a, what a nasty attitude I had. What, what a, a corruptible attitude I had. And that was me. This is me who says, you know, I, I come to church and I, I play piano and I sing and I do all these things. And this is how I'm behaving. You know, it, it's, it's something when you have to articulate who you are. When you have to come face to face with what you are, you start to see things that you didn't even recognize were in you. You start to recognize things and spirits that are in you that you didn't even realize were there. Why? Because we cover it up. Because we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to deal with it. And so we cover it so that we don't have to face it. We don't have to look at it. But when we have to verbalize it, when we have to write it down and stare back at it, it makes it so real. And it makes us see, my God, maybe I'm not at the place where I thought I was. It makes me realize that maybe I'm not at the place where I should be. But it also gives me the freedom to be, you know what? Yes, that's who I was. But I don't have to be that person. I don't have to continue on down that same path. Now that I recognize it, I can move on from it. For until we recognize it, we keep doing the same actions over and over and over. Until we recognize who we are, we keep walking in that same path over and over and over. But when we recognize, my God, I have such a stank attitude. I need to do something about it. Lord, help me. When we fall on our face and we ask the Lord for a blessing, we ask him to cleanse us, we ask him to wash us, he is faithful to do it. My God. There was a path for Jacob to take. There was a path for him to travel, to get back to his father's house, to get back to the house of God, to get back to the place where he needed to be. And the path wasn't an easy one. It wasn't a fun one. It wasn't one that, that he necessarily relished. But it was one that brought him to a dwell in a place or in the place where God touches man. Because you see, once Jacob got past the roadblocks, once he got past his brother and past himself, then the Lord says, all right. In other words, the Lord extended to Jacob an invitation. He said, listen, come back. Come back to the house of God. See, what we have to understand about the house of God is that it's not a natural building with walls and doors and windows where we gather every Sunday to sing praises and to fellowship afterward. But the house of God is the place where God dwells and meets his children. Bethel, he named this place. The place where where God desires to dwell with his children. Mm -hmm. Jacob was given the invitation to come back to Bethel. He was given the invitation to come back to this place where God desired to dwell with him and he was God. He was given this invitation to get back to this place where he would dwell in the presence of the Most High God. Where he would follow him and be obedient and the Lord would speak to him and they would have a, a direct relationship, an intimate relationship. See, when the Lord said that, he, on that last day he said, depart from me for I knew you not. He's talking about that intimacy. And there's no more uh, intimate people than the people that you dwell with, that you live with. Why? No one knows you better than the people that see you day in and day out. No one knows you better than those who, who see you when you're at your worst, who see you at every point, who smell your, your dragon breath in the morning and see you without, you know, before you put your hair in curlers or whatnot. There's no one who knows you more intimately than the ones who are closest to you. 